Glad to have you back. You're watching News Day. A petition has been written to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, calling for the investigation of Governor Aminu Masari of Katsina State. The Secretary to the State Government, Mustafa Mohamed Inua, the Commissioner for Local Government and some other government officials in over 300 billion Naira financial misappropriation. The petition was also used to urge the anti-graft agency to investigate unlawful cash withdrawal, stealing and the diversion of over 340 new vehicles belonging to 34 local government areas as well as the illegal and unlawful approval and release of 500 million naira to the national headquarters of the All Progressive Congress, the APC, for the party's June National Convention. The financial misappropriation was alleged to have been carried out between 2015 and 2018, that's in three years, in contravention of extant rules and financial regulations and constitutions of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. Now, joining us to discuss this development is a public affairs analyst, Mark D. Shehu. Good to have you join us this hour. Let me start by asking you very quickly, yeah, on the allegations of sleaze against the Katsina state government, what prompted your um, investigation into the affairs of the Katsina state government? What prompted it? Well, I think it has a constitutional root. Mm. Section 2 of the Nigerian Constitution dealing with fundamental objectives and directive principle of state policy clearly spelled out why you have government in place to protect lives, properties, honor, and dignity of people. When lives are being lost and people are being killed like rats by the minute, by the hour, by the day, by the week, all year through, when public institutions have completely collapsed, educational institutions looking like dustbins, when the health sector has completely collapsed, when there is clear looting and daylight robbery of public funds, it, be call, it, be, it calls on people of conscience to speak out. As I'm talking to you now, I am a living witness. When the governor was campaigning in 2015, he made a categorical statement that we are here to get half of the money that Governor Shema had for eight years he will convert Katsina State into a small London. As God will have it, he got more than he asked for. Between June 2015 to April 2020, Masai government got 1 trillion 230 billion as an income from Federation account, from ecological fund, from, 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 from IGR, internally generated revenue, from intervention of CBN, intervention of federal government, from Pilots Club, from Pilots Club refund, from selling and disposing of all public assets of the state, and from such other sources, 1 trillion, 230 million within 59 months. Go down back memory lane, Omar Musar Adua, the governor who presided over Katsina for eight years, plus Shema, put together, got only 1.1 trillion naira in 16 years. Therefore, there is no excuse for seeing Katsina State in a pathetic, dilapidated, sad, and irresponsible state of despair, <coughs> despondency, crisis. We are harvesting death every minute. Just yesterday, 16 people were killed in the village. In spite of the more than enough available, eight local governments have now been taken over by bandits. In spite of the more than what is available on ground, 30,000 retirees from public service have not collected their gratuities. In spite of the more than enough, from 2016 to date, less than 20% of students got their scholarship awards. In spite of what is enough to take us to the greater heights, our roads are dilapidated.
The state is indebted currently to over 280 billion naira. That is in spite of that more than 1.323 trillion naira income within 59 months. These are the smaller pictures. These are the scenarios. These are the circumstances. These are some of the, what, what is on ground to compel people like myself to speak out, to shout, to talk, and to demand that people wake up before they are finally buried by this government of ineptitude, government of people who lack focus, government of people who don't care, a government that think it can do anything and go away with it. Mm. Now, Mr. Shehu, uh, let's take a look at uh, specifics here. And it's uh, interesting that you said you're a witness uh, to the government's uh, promises. Uh, there's been talk about nepotism in public service and uh, public appointments in the Katsina state government. So how's that different from any other region in Nigeria, you think? I think our nepotism uh, rating in Katsina state is legendary. It has never happened. Let me give you this rundown. As I'm talking to you now, over 16 permanent secretaries who had served their legitimate 35 years in service, who had retired and have collected their pension and are collecting their gratuity, have suddenly been brought back into public service as permanent secretaries, thus collecting a monthly salary collecting their gratuity every month, collecting their pension every month, having paid their gratuity long, long, long ago. Why are they back? It is because they have been participants in the past looting, and being out of the system will not be safe for the current manager of the Nigerian economy, of the, of the Catholic state economy. Secondly, they are also back because they have the permanence, they have, they have the secretary to the government and the governor as people who are either their blood relations, or they are personal friends, or they are own partners in crime. Therefore, keeping them longer outside the system of government will not be safe for them and will be given the governor and the SSG sleepless nights. Number two, where you have a cashier, there is a cashier called uh, Masaudu. He was a cashier in the government house for six years. During his reign as the cashier, he was the closest person to the SSG. And by the last count, they have withdrawn in cash within the period of five years, over 40 billion naira with Mr. Udi's name appearing at every cash collection in trenches of 10 million, 10 million, 10 million over the last five years. Mm. Therefore, keeping Mr. Udu at a distance will not be safe. Therefore, what they did is now they transferred Mr. Udu back to another department in the governor's house, in the governor's office, under the power generation project. He was at the local government ministry as a cashier, and you could see what he did. Within a day, he will go to the bank 25 times. Access Bank has a branch in Kasina, has a branch in Dora, has a branch in Malifashi, has a branch in Funtua. Now, in a kind of unbelievable behind the scene power, you will see in bank statement, the same cashier, Masa Udu, have visited Malinfashi with 20 checks of 10, 10 million naira, let's say on 1st January, and he has cashed them. In the same day, he has been to Dora with 32 checks of 10, 10 million naira, cashed them. In the same day, he was in Casino Central with 28 checks of 10, 10 million naira, cashed them. And in one British team in Malinfashi, all on the same bank statements, such that in one day, he will collect 1 billion naira cash. In a total of one month, he will collect over six billion naira cash. Recently, in a bank, in Access Bank, I have the account, I have the details, I have everything. In between just one account, Katna State government has 43 bank accounts. Hmm. In just one account, in five years, Musaudu Aliu collected 11 billion 498,000 million in cash. One begin to wonder, where is EFCC? Where is NFIU? Where is the Central Bank? Where is NDIC? Where are all other financial regulating organizations when this nonsense is happening? The tragedy in Kaduna is being orchestrated and is being 
is being supported by all banks that have clandestine government account in their banks. They are complacent. They are conniving with government officials to steal people's money for selfish and irresponsible reasons. Mm. I will go further again. You have somebody who is just on level 10. Just last week, there were appointments. And incidentally, of the appointment of permanent secretaries, four of them are officers below the level 12. But they were upgraded against all clarion calls. Now they are permanent secretaries in court. What will happen to the psychology of their colleagues? What will happen to the psychology of their seniors? What will happen to the psychology of the entire public servants? It is the same system where in the last nine years, there are people who are called casuals. It is against the level in Nigeria. There are people who are still earning 5,000 naira in Kaduna under the nonsense casual, ca 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 casual pay payroll. Mm. I can continue ad infinitum. Yes. All is not well in Kaduna. Kaduna is under siege. Oh, well, very serious allegations, I must say, there, Malam um, Shehu. Um, you did say that the Katsina state government got a combined revenue of 1 trillion 230 billion within 59 months. Now, the state right. also has a debt profile right. of over 250 billion. How did they get there, and how accurate That's is true. that? You see, the danger of Nigerian democracy is that. Uh, 90% of those who are aspiring to preside over us don't even have a blueprint. They got money from somewhere, somehow, and they thought after money, the next one is power. Anybody with a blueprint will not do the nonsense happening in Kasina now. We are where we are now because we have people who have uh, a, 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 a reptile syndrome. A reptile syndrome is a syndrome where the reptile is looking for a victim to sting, whether that victim deserves that stinging or not. It is our own fault. We never had a criteria and a yardstick and a scale of weighing people who come over to ask for power. We were blindfolded. Like, as for me, nobody, nobody, and I repeat nobody, will ever come and tell me, vote me because I'm a Muslim. To hell with you. Or vote me because you are a Christian. To hell with you. Or vote me because I am a northerner. Absolute nonsense. Or vote me because I'm a middle belter. Irresponsible. <laughs> I will have an objective criteria, and that's what I call open Nigerians to adopt. Mm. Get somebody who understands your needs. Even if he doesn't, he doesn't like you, he will provide you your needs. Look for somebody who has a track record of being responsible in his locality and in his own state and in his own chosen industry. Look at, look at somebody, vote for somebody who doesn't wear the face of Moses but is hanging the hat of Pharaoh. Look for somebody who will listen to you when you talk. Look, at, look for somebody who will consult you before he takes decision on you, your property, and your common patrimony. Look for people who will know when it is right to leave when to let go. But don't look for people who will promise you manna when they don't even know where manna is. Don't look for people and give them power who have questionable circumstances and questionable history. I can continue at infinitum, but we are where we are now because those who are presiding over Kasina, managing our resources, are people who don't even know the difference between right and left. For instance, in 59 months, with clearly verifiable evidences containing the governor's signature, verifiable, containing the SRG signature, verifiable, com com with, with so many other accompanying documents. 62 billion naira was squandered in the name of security. But let me tell you the division. Number one, I can assert clearly that in the name of the current inspector general of police, in the name of various other commissioners of police who served in Katuna from 2015 today, in the name of other police officers that are working in government house Katsina, in the name of police officers who are in the bush in 80, 80 local governments fighting bandits, the SSG, 
in active connivance and collaboration with the governor, I mean the Bella Masari, squandered 62 billion Naira in the of the Nigerian police, they stole money. And I'm seeing, I, I know the word stealing, and it's heavy. They stole money using the IG's name, using the police institution. They stole money using the DSS structure name. They stole money using the name of the chief of army staff, commander of the 35 battalion in Kasina. All armies that are participating in the current onslaught of bandits in Kasina state. They stole money in the name of Nigerian Air Force. They stole money in the, in the name of Nigerian civil defense, Nigerian prison, and uh, road safety, and even the local vigilante and embanga. The, you can see the stealing clearly written on the horizon with clearly documented evidences. It is this government that wants us to keep quiet. As a result of the squander of the security money. In fact, they stole money in the name of Mr. President. There's, I'm repeating, they stole money in the name of Mr. President. They stole money in the name of Mr. President, President Muhammad Buhari, in the following way. From the day they came in, in June 2015, they started orchestrating a monthly memo that they have taken over the responsibility of paying for security in President uh, residence in Deora, his, his, home, his home state. And according to them, they have deployed 20 DSS staff, 30 Nigerian police, 12 army, and two senior army supervisors, totaling over 60 people guarding Mr. President's house. We have made our checks. There are less than eight security men guarding that house where the president visits only occasionally. But money is being removed every month in the name of paying for the guards who are guarding Mr. President's house in Dora. Mr. President should be interested in this. I have all the documents required to establish this fraud in the name of Mr. President. Such that today, we have been harvesting death in Kasina. We have been harvesting melancholy in Kasina. We have been harvesting trauma in Kasina. Nobody is safe at home, on the farm, in the banking hall, on the highway. This time around, even in the cemetery, nobody is safe in Kasina. 80% of the people are living in abject poverty. Mm. Nobody is sure of what will happen tomorrow. And the government has gagged everybody. Mm. Mm. No doubt uh, these are serious uh, allegations there. Madi Shehu, human rights activist, many thanks for your thoughts on uh, those uh, uh, allegations of financial impropriety uh, in Katsina State. I would like to thank you. Thank you for uh, joining us.